Today on Doodle Bud, going to be doing a quick comparison of this approximately 900 Canadian dollar pen, the Mont Blanc 146, with this approximately $50 Canadian pen. Looks pretty darn close. This is the Mahjong P136. I'll do a quick rundown. How are they similar? How are they dissimilar? And show you what's up. Line up the bottom of the cap. So you got the big center band, two bands, one top, one bottom, just one there. Keeping them reasonably lined up. Let's go along and check out where the clips are. So you can see on the 136, it shoots up a little bit higher up the pen. But the overall design of the clips are very, very, very similar. Even though the length of the clip and the little ball end are pretty darn close as well. This has more of a curve. This one is just a touch more flat, slight, slight curve, but not as much as that one. One's got a snowflake, one does not. <laughs> is that the only difference for the price? I don't know. Uh, obviously not. We got gold and all that stuff versus steel nibs, but let's keep it going. Um, overall profile of the caps, as you can see, they're very, very close. Uh, looks like this one just is a little bit longer and kind of tapers a little more at the very end versus this has more of a, you can see that the taper starts kind of a little more down here and then goes up for the Mont Blanc, so a little more curve to it. Moving along on the body here, keeping everything lined up off the caps. Let's get that there. Yeah, so overall, I'll give you the dimensions here in a second, but just so you can see the change in profile, the placement of the piston knob and all that stuff, at least when the pen is capped are slightly different, but we both got piston knobs. So overall dimension, uh, like this with the pens capped, the Mont Blanc 146, this total length here is 142. The Mahjong 136 here, this is 146 and a half. So it's a touch longer, about uh, four more millimeters. Put them side by side. If we can get them there, you can see you got just a little more length on the back end there. On this guy, pop off the caps, the main body here. So the end to the tip of the nib there, that pulls in at 125.2. The 146, a touch shorter. This is 124 millimeters like that. Now comparing dimensions on the pen body itself, as far as diameters go, the, uh, the widest point, the main body here, this is about 13 millimeters, and I got pretty much the same thing on the 136. If we go down to the grip here, there is a slight, slight little taper. So I went from the start of the threads here to the very edge. Those both ring in at the same. It's about 11.3, 11.4, down to about 10.8, and the overall length of the section, about 15 and a half millimeters. I'm using these El Cheapo ABS plastic calipers with a whopping one decimal point of resolution. I use these because I don't want to scratch my pen. So, and again, within 0.1 millimeters of uh, accuracy is good enough for what we're doing. Let's get you a quick close look at the nibs since we got the business end right here. So obviously we got gold, we got steel. So that's a massive price difference and everything else as well. But there's <laughs> not, it's not an $800 difference, but uh, let's keep continue on here. They both are very nice looking nibs. Of course, you got uh, the classic Mont Blanc star in there and a ton of history to go with this thing as well. 14 karat gold. And in here, it just has the moon man. Uh, logo on there's got some nice work here on the sides the focus on the camera I don't know how well it's going to show that out there. It's uh, it's a little bit better You can see that work on the nib. It's a very nice looking steel nib and this right now as far as I know only comes in a fine Maybe there will be different nib point sizes at some point with the uh, Mont Blanc You have lots of cool nib options, which is neat Visually you can see just the difference in sort of the overall profile and cut of the nib uh, slightly different shape. It looks like uh, the shoulders kind of sweep down a little bit further there on the 146 versus the 136, but they both look quite nice. Turning them on end, you can see the profile. There's the focus range. Actually quite similar. I would say the 146 is kind of a little bit wider at the top. And then the uh, the 136, we have like kind of a bird wing profile where it kind of comes in and then out again, how I would sort of draw a seagull when I was a kid. So I did just order the tool for this, but one thing I know now, I go, oh, because I want to see if the tool would fit on a Mont Blanc. But do you see what I see? So the notches are different. These ones are more just square and they are 180 degrees opposed. These ones have a little more of a rectangle type profile to it. And they're not out 180. They're out, you know, whatever that is, 100 and... Uh, 65 degrees or something like that so you can see they're not straight on the center points or off a little bit the uh 
146 the Mont Blanc and the other Mont Blancs I have are like that 180 out. So a bit of a quick post production interruption since this video the wrench did come in. Now the uh, Mont Blanc 146 went back to its owner so I don't have that pen but I do have my 149. I'm not going to show you on the P136 there's other videos you can see yes this this will take the pen apart um, but I was curious will this work on a Mont Blanc pen so you got two sides on the wrench a narrow side and a wide side wide side is for the piston assembly this is for the nib assembly you can see here it's not going to fit a 149 the 149 is just too big of a nib and feed to get on there but you could see it looks like it would go it would fit in there so i imagine this would work on the 146 just be maybe cautious that you don't end up scratching the top of the nib with the wrench just something to think about as far as clearance goes if we flip it over i opened up the piston here a little bit so you can see and you can see where are they there they are there so little notches right there let me turn the flash on is that a little better you can see the notches right there on the side and so if you go put the wrench in try to do it there we go so it fits in so that's actually that's actually pretty nice because if you find wrenches online not by Mont Blanc but ones that say they are removal tools for Mont Blanc pens they're quite more you know a lot more expensive so I actually saw the price came down I think it was maybe $14 I paid instead of 20 or 20 something like before so there you go. All the more reason, I guess, maybe to get one of these wrenches. Comparing the feeds, they will be different. This is an ebonite split feed. This is a plastic ABS feed. I know, I think that's changed. I think Mont Blanc uses plastic feeds now, potentially on their modern ones, which is a little bit crazy for that price point. Let me know down there in the comments if they're still using ebonite or not, or they, they just went straight to plastic and charged the premium price. But there you go. There's a little difference in the... Uh, profile of the feeds it's a bit of a useless comparison because this is a pen you can't buy like this anymore about 1985 versus 2022 so i lined up the nib here the points going all the way up because dimensionally the rest of the pens are are almost like identical you can see that if we go along there's a slight slight difference on where the pistons start like this one's about a millimeter further back and again you can see that profile it's a little comes down a little bit more narrow and not quite as narrow on the 136. One thing I did notice right away uh, when I picked up the 136, so the cap bands, like on these Mont Blanc pens, these premium ones, it is super smooth. It's it's right in there really, really good. With the 136, I did notice, and I, I got a full review on this pen, and if you want to see something more on this guy, I did a full restoration video, so check those out separately. I don't need to duplicate information. Finally, that focus is so bad. Um, but you can even see with the naked eye here, the bit of a step. So just from an assembly perspective, you know, things aren't being done quite as perfect as on the real deal there. So but these are just a little minor details. Is that worth all that extra money? No, they, they can make sell that pen for less, but it is what it is, whatever. That's their part of their branding and all that stuff. So that's another conversation. So dimensionally, they're very, very similar. The 136 is a touch longer that has to do with a bit of a longer cap and also how it threads and where the cap sits on it. So you're, you're netting about four and a half millimeters more length when it's capped like this versus the 146. And then uh, the main bodies, like I said, they're the same, a touch more in the cap on the 136. Compare the weights, I figure since it's a touch longer and a hair wider in some spots, it should weigh a touch more, 126.85, sorry, not 126, 26.85, let's say, and 24.38. So we got, you know, two and a half-ish grams heavier. They're both inked, I don't know about the same amount, but they're both pretty close to full fills. So about two and a half grams more in this one. A little detail on the pen. So to uncap a Mont Blanc, this is true. My 149, same with the 146, it's one turn. So that's a nice feature with it. With the 136, I think we're like one and like an eighth. So again, pretty darn close. So as far as using the pens, how do they perform? Uh, really, really well. One nice thing I found with my Mont Blancs is they never have dry up or hard start issues. My 149 has been flawless. Same with my other Vintage 24. It's a slip cap. That has been worked great. As long as there's ink in the pen, it writes so far. This one has been the same way, and I've heard that kind of across the board. Well, the 136, so far, at least for me, has been the same experience. I haven't had any nib dry out or hard start issues. Uh, actually, I don't use this pen a bunch, 
because I'll show you in a second, but you know, so it's gone several weeks without using it and it's written right away. Now, the main reason I don't use this pen too much is this. So I have a fairly large hand and it's nice for some pens. It can, this can work for a lot of people, no problem. But for me, it's a bit small. So a handy thing to do is just put the cap on post it and get the pen on there. But I'm balancing this on there because one little wiggle and the cap comes off. This is not a very secure poster. You got to jam it like I did there. Um, but as you're writing, the cap is going to come loose, any flicks or movement in your hand and it pops off. So that part is, is kind of disappointing. I've, I've talked about that a ton with this pen. It's just, it's not a good capping pen, uh, posting pen, I should say. And so because of that, it is a bit too small for me to write with, you know, the 146 on its own. I wouldn't really like it too much because it is a bit small, but I can just do this. It goes on, you know, nice and easy. Like I'm not pushing hard. Just like, look, just mega gentle. Just slide it on and it stays. That's, that's all I'm asking for to post a pen. It's not a hard design thing to do. You just have to do it in your design. Lots of pens post. So if you need that extra little bit of length on there, now it fits in my hand a lot better, a lot more comfortable. Um, you know, I would use a 146 all the time be because it is more comfortable in that regards. But if all they did was adjust that on this pen, I'd be using this pen so much more, but because of that, I don't use it a bunch and it's just, it's just a little too uncomfortable for me. Now, how do they feel in the hand as far as material goes? Like comparison, can you tell the difference if you're blindfolded and you grab them in the same part of the pens? You can. So it's it's one of those things where it's very subtle. I'm used to checking out materials and parts in the machine shop when they come out of the machine shop there or, uh, you know, we're picking different components when I'm building stuff. You can feel the difference in the finish. Again, it's not massive. It's not like this thing is all gritty or nothing. This feels really, really good. But just how it feels in the hands feels a little bit smoother, a little more sleek. Um, just a nicer kind of sensation to the resin they use on that one versus the P136. Is it a massive difference? No, it, but it, it is something I can, I can notice the, the difference in the feel of the material. I can feel this is a more, uh, premium <laughs> again, plastic over the 136, but that's a slight difference. One big win for the 136 is when it comes down to color options. So for the 146, what you see is what you get. As, as long as the color you love is black, you're going to love this pen. If you want anything else, it comes in black. With the 136, there's all sorts of options they have right now. They get this lovely green. Of course, there's black as well. There's like a, like a dove gray or something, a blue, and there's like a burgundy color. That's where they're at right now. Maybe that will change over time. There might be even more colors, which is cool. Uh, some I don't know if it's true for the 146. I know for the 149, you can get like rose gold and rhodium trim and stuff like that. Maybe you can do that with the 146, but for the most part, you got black here. You at least have some color options. That's really nice. So we did a bunch of comparisons between the pens. Now we'll finish off with a few thoughts. This isn't meant to be a versus kind of thing. Who wins? I mean, they're very different. This is a premium luxury pen with gold and all that good stuff. This is a very economical pen. This one has some branding behind it where they've done a fantastic job of boosting the value of that brand and telling you it's worth all that money you spend. Is it really worth that? I mean, that's up to you from a, you know, build point. Of course not, but that's, that's how it goes. There's premium clothing brands and watch brands and all that sort of stuff. How much of it is the, is the actual cost versus what they bake into the cake? Uh, you know, that's a value proposition for you to decide. Um, for me, you know, wanting to buy one of these new, I wouldn't feel comfortable spending that full price, at least for my budget. Um, that's why I would look at secondhand market. That's how I got my 149 brand new. I'd say no way. I was very happy with the price I paid for this. And I think I got a great deal. And I'm very happy with the pen. Now, this is why this one comes in. Even at a good used price secondhand market, it's still expensive. So if that's just out of your reach, don't feel bad. You're getting a fantastic pen for there. If you're thinking of getting one of these, but aren't sure, grab one of these too, because then you'll find out for 50 bucks, it's a great uh, way to potentially save you hundreds and hundreds if you don't like it, or if you still do like it, you didn't waste your money because now you got a pen that you can travel around with, um, you know, put it in your journal on a trip or whatever, and not have to worry so much if you lose it or break it, you lot, you're out 50 bucks 
versus, you know, a ton more on this side as well. But there we go. We'll leave it at that. I'm not going to say what is better, which isn't. They're very different pens, very different price points. So it's kind of a useless type of thing. But thought since I have this 146, this is going back to the owner tomorrow. I might as well do this quick comparison because when I picked up that 136, I thought, wow, this is pretty darn close to the Mont Blanc. But there you have it. Hope that helped you out. And until then, we'll catch you next time.